Last time we developed an absorbing material for the side of the grid that points upward towards the sky. We want this absorbing material to absorb any upward propagating waves so that the grid looks infinitely long in that direction. Here is a list of the conditions that must be met in order for this absorbing layer to work. First we need epsilon 2 equal to epsilon 1. So epsilon 1 in our case, or, or material 1, is air, and epsilon 2 is in the absorbing material. We need mu2 equal to mu1, and we defined a polynomial grading that we can use if to ramp up the conductivity slowly from 0 at the interface of the absorbing layer. And finally, we came up with a relationship where sigma star, the magnetic loss, relates to sigma, the electric loss, using mu and epsilon. Now let's see if we can implement this layer of absorbing material in our model. By the way, before we do that, I want to let you know that this absorbing material that we've been discussing is called a perfectly matched layer, or PML for short. It was first introduced in 1994 by Dr. Jean-Pierre Berenger, a French physicist. This PML that Dr. Berenger developed was a game changer for computational electromagnetics. Before he introduced PML, people were using what are called radiation boundary conditions, or ABC for short, where they would just try to estimate the fields. Say we have a two-dimensional mesh here. They would try to estimate the fields along the outside by using neighboring values on the inside of the grid. Back in 1994, for general two- and three-dimensional simulations, the reflections from the edges of the grids using RBCs were only down by a factor of about 100. So I'll say down by about 100, a factor of 100, compared to the incident wave. Whatever incident wave was approaching the boundary, if we had an RBC here, the reflection would be only be reduced by about a factor of about 100 compared to the incident wave. Now, what about Dr. Berenger's PML? How strong is the reflection from a PML on the edge of a grid? Well, we'll find out in a little bit. So let's start implementing the PML absorbing boundary condition in our model so that we no longer see this reflection that is occurring here at x equals 0. Take a minute and make a list of the things that you think you need to add or change to your existing one-dimensional Maxwell's equations code in order to implement an absorbing boundary on the left side of your grid. Be as detailed as you can. When you're done, we'll compare your list with mine.